I think they should have made respecking today for free because the fact that I'm already paying a hundred thousand plat to respec and this is just like the second one that I'm doing. So Exalted Angel, obviously we need to try this, right? Because it's the go-to for a lot of warlocks anyway. But this tree got a lot of changes. It's completely different now than it used to be. So we're just going to buy everything. So this is our mantle for fire, light, alignment, positive. And this is our mantle for fire, light, Okay, so let's see. There's These are a little bit different. So, fire spells, light spells, now deal extra light or fire damage. Positive spells do extra positive damage. What's the difference between this, though? Casting fire, light, alignment, positive, surrounds you by fire for five seconds, damaging all that attack you. All right, yeah, I don't want this one. This one, the wrathful form is like a tank form or something like that. This is the caster one that I want right here. So angelic form. So we're in angelic form. That's our new mantle. This is the same deepening faith. This is new though. So we get armor class PRR and immunity to natural diseases and poisons. Okay, this is our epic strike. And, you know, like, from my perspective, it sucks that, like, this quick low-level heal isn't separated from the actual DPS Epic Strike, because I would love to have both. You know, I would love to be able to use both. We're going to do the Sun Pillar, because we want to see the DPS on it. This does DPS when we do our leap, and this does a heal when we do our leap. So we'll take the heal just to see if it actually helps. So we can take that heal. See if I can take enchantment, I can. Consecrated Cinders. This Oh, this is the stupid debuff garbage. Yeah, it's junk. That's basically what that is. That is like this. Men aura of Menace. And you can see I don't even have Aura of Menace on my bar. I don't I don't use it. I don't want to use it. It's junk. It just is a tiny little debuff that doesn't make a difference if you're doing anything over elite. You know, maybe on normal it would make a difference, but Uh, we're just going to take all this stuff because we're just going to buy everything in the tree. So this is my absorb. That's good. Getting more absorb is always good. Definitely. All right. This makes my epic strike blind trip and make them helpless. That's awesome. This here we will maximize... Holy Fireball. We're definitely going to try that. And then Intensify. Yeah. Okay. Alright, there we go. All right, so let me. That's my misty step, but we're going to swap that out with the angelic jump. Okay, there's my epic strike. Stand and be judged. That's our CC. This is another heal. 
Holy Fireball. Definitely want to try that. This is our mantle. Okay. And now Ascendance. This is our epic moment. So let's actually move the epic moment here and let's read it just to make sure we know what it does. Okay, it makes single target, cure spells, healing pillar on any target. If you cast it on one person, it applies to everyone and it hits the entire raid no matter where they are. So if you're at the entrance, you can heal everyone by casting uh, heal when you're in Ascendant. That's really good. Uh, the spell cannot crit. Raise dead gives you full hit points. And now turn undead may turn any type of creature. Right. Okay. So that's what we want to do. So now in this Ascendance, we can turn monsters. So what we are going to do is pin turn undead so we can actually use it and see if it does like we'll, we'll try to turn the slots right we'll go back to that same quest and we'll try to turn the slots and see if we can actually do it so there's our turn undead i have 52 charges of turn undead <laughs> in case i didn't have enough for some reason, I, I got 52. All right, there we go. So, sadly, we, we are in the mantle, but there's no built-in heal. We do get this... You know, I mean, it's a heal, so we'll take it. Uh, so let's go back to that quest. So we're going to try to do the same thing that we did. We're going to try to see how we are against the slods. And then also how we do against that mimic. Because that mimic is really tough. Going on R1. At the end of the passage ahead, you can see okay, a this dude I have to stand next to in order to hurt him. Astral plane. The slot's defense there, that's my collapses. As it comes My epic strike. Hit him for like 1,900. Here's the epic strike again. Looks like about 1,800. Okay, that one hit him for like 5,000. There's another 5,000. Four thousand three hundred. Five thousand six hundred. Okay, so it it's it does not seem to hit as hard as the one in Fate Singer. Right? But Fate Singer, that epic strike, I was also in that resonance builder, so basically like the more stacks that they get the more sonic damage they take the so activates. it could be that and they the are inherently doing the, the same it's just i was able to boost the sonic damage that mobs were taking with with part of the fate singer ability tree so that's something to consider okay we should be able to wing over to this one. Oh no i missed it
With both levers pulled, the fortress's barrier collapses in upon itself, revealing the passage beyond. It is really nice having the exalted angel wings. All right, so let's see. That's the pillar, 1900. Okay, we'll hit it again, 5,000. And this is stand and be judged. So I, yeah, it worked, but he saved out of that really quick. But I finally knocked one down. So there's the pillar. That hit him for 10,000 and knocked him down. So that's really good. A wave of energy washes from the small tower as the barrier blocking the entrance is disrupted. Nope, I'm gonna fall. All right, we're going to get all these slots. We're going to see how this holy fireball hits them. And then if we get enough of them close to us, I'm going to try to turn them. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try to get them all. Will they will they come near me? They do. All right. Here we go. Here's that. All right, so I just tried to turn, I'm <laughs> just turning on dead now. All right, I guess it did. It turned everything except the Reaper. <laughs> see if I can see if this dude got hit with it. Yeah, he did. He did, I was able to turn them. It took a few, like it wasn't the first one, but I mean, that seems like that's pretty viable, like, if you're going to use that. It's once every five minutes, but... What I'm noticing is my DC on this 102. You would think that that Sun Pillar DC, that's really high, right? 102? I know people get, like, 130, but for the average player... And this is R1, and these mobs are saving versus that 102. Okay, here's the Holy Fireball. We'll hit them with the Holy Fireball again. Since there's a group of them here. You know, I mean, it's okay. It looks like it was 6,000 light damage and about 2,000 or 3,000 um, fire damage. Yeah, and, you know, it looks like the total amount of damage from that Holy Fireball will be about... 10 to 12,000. So it's, you know, it's decent. I wouldn't say I feel like it's OP. Like, this does not feel OP to me. This feels normal. Fate Singer felt like it was OP. Like, Fate Singer felt like it was playing really, really strong considering what it was supposed to do. But you can see, I just hit that dude for 8,600. So it, it could be a perception thing. Just it could be me just completely. Look, I just hit that dude for 6,700. There, I just I killed him. That was two epic strikes to kill a slot on R1. That's... There's 8,700. See if we can use our stand and be judged on that dude. He saved. So, he saved versus my stand and be judged. And my stand and be judged saving throw is a 104 will save. So, I mean... I don't know, man, like, who, if you, that's a very high DC for the, for an ability, like, I think the average player coming to play DDO who plays casually, if they get their DCs to 100, that's really good, and this thing saved versus 104, he saved again, like, so, in my opinion, that makes that skill kind of useless. Like, it used to not be a save that they could just completely shrug off. That used to be, like, a guaranteed thing. So, I'm not sure it's worth it if you can be in a raid and things can just completely ignore it. Or, you know, this is R1. If we were in on R6, like, 
it would be even more likely to ignore that damage, so. Um, you know what I forgot? I, I got a little ahead of myself trying to do the turn undead thing. We didn't fight the Mimic, so we'll go back and fight the Mimic. want to see how the pillar does on the mimic and i also want to see how the holy fireball does on the mimic the other thing i'm noticing too is that um even though i have a lot of mana like i'm at 75 percent now so kind of a little bit worried that i won't have enough mana to kill this thing but we'll see I did not think about mana at all when I was in Fate Singer, and I normally don't think about it at all when I'm in Primal Avatar. So, just I'm just throwing that out there as data, right? Like, uh, I do like the built-in heal though for this. It feels it feels really good. Cure light wounds or whatever the hell the they gave us. Lets out an unexpected okay, so here we go. Attacks. So what I'm going to do, I've got 15 seconds till I can turn these things. Now we're gonna try. I'm going to going to flee for a second. I'm gonna try to turn them. Oh, actually, it looks like they're going to. All right, here we go. Let's go. There, I just yeah, I that worked. That worked. I jumped into the epic moment, and I turned undead, and it it banished the ooze. So that's awesome. That is really, really cool. I could foresee, like, a, a bunch of people in a raid, and they time it out where they each pop their moment and then banish a bunch of stuff. Because it, it doesn't matter what the mob is, you can banish anything. So... I could see cycling that. Um, the damage on this light pillar looks pretty similar. And in this mantle, I'm getting some really big light procs from my my aura, like 9,000, stuff like that. Like if we just watch the aura tick. not super great I think primal avatar would be better for a fey warlock just because watching my burst I'm not seeing really big light procs You know, but it doesn't appear to be procking at all, to be honest with you. Like, in my opinion, that that's not working correctly. That I'm not procking my mantle at all with my with my aura in Exalted Angel. That I can see anyway. I, mean, I could be incorrect, but I'm not seeing it, right? Okay, so let's holy fireball this dude. And there's my epic strike. That hit him for 66. There's 22. Here's the holy fireball. Yeah, you know, I'm not... The damage on that holy fireball is not... Okay, that was a 9,000... Uh, damage light pillar. There's another 9700. That was 2900. That was low. Holy fireball right now. Okay. 5000 fire, 6000 light. You know, I mean, that's not terrible. 6400 epic strike. There's 3,100. I mean, keep in mind, that Holy Fireball, that's like top tier. So, it, it, from my 
perspective, it feels like it's doing about half the damage that it should. Especially considering my epic strike hits for like 9600. When it when it crits, like that was 5000 light and 2000 fire. But there's an 8500 light pillar. So 5,000 light, 6,000 fire, 8,500 light. Uh, he's immune to stand and be judged, so yeah, I mean, he'll just he'll flag immune. He's immune to being turned, so there's no reason to try it. You know, all in all, like, if I were to make an assessment, if somebody were new to the game and they were, like, um, looking for a destiny, I think... If you were on a warlock and you jumped into this destiny for the mobility, for the extra heals, for that turn on dead, I think it's really solid. But it doesn't feel beyond the fact that you can now turn anything. It doesn't feel OP. Like that fireball is really underwhelming. It's like anything else. And if I don't crit on my light pillar, it's extremely underwhelming. But, okay, so let's do the fireball. Yeah, I mean, six that 6,800 light, a couple thousand fire. 6,600 epic strike. There's another, I did... 5,600 light, about 3,000 fire. There's an, a light pillar. Okay, there's another holy fireball. That one just didn't crit at all on either, and the numbers were under 2k for both damage types. So, I mean, you know, it's... Yeah, that's great if you're doing elite content, but if you're in on an R4 or higher, it, it's not going to really... You're not going to be that impressed with the damage on that, but, you know, it's something. It's something. I, I feel like this is really middle of the road. Considering how much they work they did to this tree, it the feels like they took a lot of the uh, power away from it. Like, it, it really is sort of un upsetting that, you know, like a lot, of, I know a lot of people who use this tree for the heal, the built-in heal, and not that the, you know, that mass cure moderate's bad. So I'm thinking basically on what I just play tested, I would skip Holy Fireball and when you go into this tree, I would take the heal instead, the chain heal, right? I mean, it seems like it would be much better. Like now that's a personal decision. You know, it does, it's not like Holy Fireball was completely terrible, but it, you know, it didn't feel like a, a tier five ability, in my opinion. So, so we're gonna respec again, because I think we tested this as much as we can in the moment. Like, turn on dead, awesome. Like that's totally great. Uh, I want to do. I need a shrine. Yeah, oh, I went to the wrong place. Here, I can do two tumbles in a row. I know that you can take feats that will give you more tumble charges, and I was hoping that they would tie it to like class and race abilities as well. So I'm sure on the forum somebody will post what the max tumble charges are. I don't know what that number is off the top of my head at the moment, though. Oh, sorry if somebody asked me something in chat. Uh, in large, I don't have, like, natively. These are the meta magics that I take when I level up. But if I can get in large, like, from, uh, you know, Fade Arc Illusionist. I would like this tier, core tier five. I like it. And then 
When I was in Fate Singer, I picked a Marge as my, you know, as the um, free meta magic. Because I think Enlarge is great. Like, it, it's really good. It's really strong. All right. So, for Exalted Angel, just to summarize, Ascendance, awesome. Like, it's probably going to be one of the go to epic moments for anyone who raids just because for 20 seconds. You can turn undead and banish any monster. And we, we tried it out on the slots. It worked. Um, it didn't work on the Reaper, but it damaged the Reaper. Every time I turned it, it damaged the Reaper. Um, Holy Fireball, I would skip and take the Chain Heal instead. That's probably what I would do. So I can still see a lot of healers using this tree. Because supposedly they made this chain cure a lot better. And like the the way it chains through things is, is really quick. So that's probably what I would do. Because Holy Fireball is underwhelming. Now, I mean, if you really liked it or if you wanted to do flavor, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't like, oh my god, this is insane. You know, um... And the epic strike is okay. It's up every once every six seconds, and I, we were hitting consistently with it for between five and ten thousand damage. That's decent. You know, that's similar to what we were seeing in Fate Singer. But keep in mind, Fate Singer is off cooldown once every three seconds for the spell cast, which is you can cast it twice as fast as this. So even though this was critting for ten k. I could do two crits in Fate Singer for 10k and pop out 20k damage in the same six seconds that I could do in Exalted Angel. So it's something to decide. Exalted Angel has a lot of good stuff built into it, though. Like the the wings obviously still make it like one of the go-to trees for a lot of people. That is a really solid heal. That mass cure moderate. And there's a bunch of other cool stuff, but I really enjoyed that turn undead thing.